Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to bring you over to Tony's place to go check out his uh, vintage system. Now this is not Mr. Vintage. For those uh, who are new to my channel, I have a friend called Mr. Vintage because he owns a lot of vintage gear. Tony is not Mr. Vintage, but he owns a, a very high-end, uh, nice vintage system. And uh, I'm going to yeah bring you over to go check it out. Now, before I start, I want to tell you a story, and that's very important so you can appreciate this system. Can a vintage system, a vintage high-end system, compete with today's high-end system? So when I went over to film uh, Tony's system, Tony told me, look, I have to let you listen to this orchestra piece before you go and let me know, you know, what do you hear? So I'm like, uh, what? I'm going to be tested? All right, time to go into Super Saiyan deep listening mode. And um, so he played me this uh, vinyl, uh, this uh, London Symph Symphony Orchestra piece. I'll just put it on the screen here so you know which one is it. Uh, to see, okay, so what am I supposed to listen for? And as I listen, I listen, I listen, and then I turn around and I told him, I hear the rumblings of a train track. And he turns around and says, yeah, that's it. I'm like, whoa, this is incredible. You see, Tony actually reached out to the company that uh, issued these, uh, this vinyl. The original one, they actually took it off. They, but by doing so, uh, I have some notes here actually, um, by removing the subsonic frequency, it also affected the high frequencies. And uh, when they re-release it, they decided to keep it in because not a lot of system can go all the way to that frequency and still keep its definition. That's why I always say bass is the most difficult to get. You can have that boom, 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 24 inch woof of pounding, but can you hear that rumbling of a train track somewhere faintly in a few floors down from the recording studio? That is the challenge of a high-end system. In fact, he tried it in other $100,000 systems, and you say, I can't hear it. He can't hear that faint rumbling of a train track. Now that I mention it, if you have this uh, vinyl, you might be able to uh, hear something. Now the question is, how good your system is? Can you make out the difference that that was the rumbling of a train track? Of course, you need a very good system, a resolving system that can reproduce that frequency properly and of course you need to know how to go into super saiyan mode when you listen right so uh with that uh yeah let's go check out your system what kind of system can outperform many high-end system today and while it's maybe 30 years old all right let's go so usually i don't show my guests uh on camera but today is special tony here is going to uh, guide us through his system He's actually an electrician, and he installed the special jacks at my place. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, the plugs. Okay. Hi, YouTube. All right, so this is my system. So tell me about the turntable, guys. All right, so this is a vintage Torrance TD-125. Yeah, this doesn't look it's like a standard a, one, though. It looks, you know, modified, right? Of course, yeah. It's totally modified, damped. Mm -hmm. uh, I put a... Uh, I changed the plant. I got it uh, custom made for me by someone in England. In England, so it's a much heavier. It's it's massive, oh. and it's also it could accept a twelve inch tone arm. Okay. Uh, I I did switch my tone arm. Uh -huh. uh, I put an Alphonson uh, flagship model. Okay. Alphonson okay. is out of business, but it's still a very uh, it's a gimbal bearing uh, really? tone arm. Maybe it's worth more now now that they're out of business. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have a Dynavector uh, low output moving coil. Okay. A cartridge. It's a the DV twenty X two. Uh huh. Uh, so it's a low output, so you also need a, a phono. Okay, so what kind of uh, phonos do you have down there? It's a two box, it's a project, mm -hmm. two box uh, DS. Uh, but I did change the tubes, I put uh, really good tubes, I don't remember which model. Okay. And I got also uh, a power supply for it. Oh. Uh, it's like almost the same price as the phono, the power supply, because mm -hmm. it's very important, especially when you're using a low output moving coil. Okay. The power supply was made by Swagman Labs, mm -hmm. uh, a guy in Japan. Mm -hmm. He made it for me, all silver wiring in there and all. Mm -hmm. I put Oracle mat also on my turntable. Uh, I modified it so I can put a clamp. 
So there is a suspension I noticed that yeah. I can, uh, you know. That's right. Yeah. So vibrations don't uh, get in there. Yeah. Uh, so how much does, did it cost you to modify it? It looks beautiful. Uh, the wood is high quality. Just the plank was about a thousand bucks. What? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's a piano finish too I got. Uh -huh. I, I chose the color, mm -hmm. the thickness, everything. So it's custom made yeah. like one though. Like only one in the world probably that's it enough. that's it you oh, got it oh my goodness and i got this i got the uh, upgraded feet okay okay uh, those are by audio Te audio technica mm -hmm. they're uh, you can level them and they're uh, mm -hmm. vibration isolation uh, you want to call it whatever yeah and guys by the way uh i heard the turntable is uh very very good it's <laughs> amazing the turntable every time when i come here after I go home, I feel like upgrading my system. I feel like going out and get a turntable. But I don't know, man. This thing probably costs two grand, right? With the modification and with the, uh, the Dyna Vector. Well, just the cartridge was, uh, I think, over a grand. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the tone arm is a grand. So we're on the used market. Oh, goodness. Okay, yeah. never mind. Uh, let's just ask the dish, <laughs> dish to instead. That's right. <laughs> All right, so let's go down. And right. uh, what I see here, you have the uh, carry uh, preamp. Yeah. Right? That's with uh, how many tubes? Uh, well, a few tubes in it. Yeah, there's four tubes in there. Four tubes That's in right. it. That's right. Right? Yeah. Uh, I know that you had the past lap uh, Alpha, whatever you call that. Yeah, the Elf. The Elf, right? Elf L. Yeah, okay. that was a passive preamp. Okay. And then uh, I heard this one and I mm -hmm. jumped on this one. So what happened after you introduced tubes into your system? The highs were much better. It was more holographic. More holographic, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it like woke up the highs. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I love the preamp. Mm -hmm. So next, I think the star of the system is yeah. that you have a crossover built for your system. If you look That's at, right. If you look at the system, it has three Macintosh, right? So one for the high, one for the mids, and one for the low. That's right. Uh, the, wow. Electronic crossover. Electronic crossover. So tell us a little bit about the, your crossover. All right, so this is a, a Marchand Electronics crossover. Mm -hmm. um, it was specially designed for me, you can say, mm -hmm. but um, it's a three-way. Okay. So like you said, you, you have to have one amp for the lows, one amp for the mids, and one for the highs. Yeah. And it's what's good about this mm -hmm. is that it's, it separates, it, it sends only the signal to the amplifier which it is going to be being used so that your amplifier is it's like a, a specialist so one amplifier only gets the frequencies for the lows uh -huh. the other amplifier only gets so there's a higher how do you say a uh, uh, leeway or bat how can you say well, it? I, I do it, find it effortless that's right, right so yeah each, each unit each unit is a, a yeah. specialist in those frequencies right, right. there's no uh, high frequencies going to my sub amplifier okay so it's a uh, so I don't hear distortion, you know, these That's right. JBL, you can play them like concert level and it has no problem handling it. Like and the damping don't... factor also stays the same. Okay. Uh, because when you have a crossover that's passive, your uh, the damping factors change and all sorts of uh, mm -hmm. different things. It's, you, you, can, you can read up uh, and we could talk about hours on the electronic crossover. Some people, they complain if you get a cheaper one, yeah. the drivers won't intertwine as well. Okay, so it's not coherent. Yeah, they, 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 don't, uh, yeah. they don't blend in. Yeah, yeah. You'll hear like a tweeter, mid, uh, sub. Okay. Like in the, but they won't uh, blend in as one, you know? Right. But in my system, yeah. I, I've upgraded the electronic crossovers. This is my third one. Uh -huh. So I know quite a bit about them. Okay. And I also played the uh, guitar. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Growing up already... until uh, about high school, you know, in my high school days, that's what I did. I played I in... Uh, so you have a good year for... Uh, yeah, live yeah. instruments. And now my wife is a, a singer. Yes, yes. So Fantastic. I'm always around live instruments. She has a 10-piece orchestra. A 10-piece uh, orchestra. Oh, yeah, her band is it's, okay. it's special. So by the way, uh, I've seen the, uh, the measurement graph for this. Yeah. Um, it's all calibrated with the microphone. Okay, okay. And uh, I notice it's really flat. There's a little bump at the, the yeah. 30 hertz, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And it, you did it on purpose. You had to order, yeah. order special. Weapons. So, yeah, well, Phil Marchand bit, built uh, the, uh, it's a Marchand Electronics crossover. Yeah. And the, he, uh, I sent it to him. It, before, there was no uh, hump uh -huh. in the 30 hertz range. Yeah. So, but he created it for me as it used to be on my other crossovers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a normal, it was a 
I don't know if it's a base boost or whatever. Okay. But he modified. He gave me the modules. I just had to pop them in there. Mm -hmm. It's a normal thing. Uh, I mean, every system's different, and oh, okay. so there's always a bit of tweaking. So now let's talk about your JBL speakers. Yes. Right. These are what 15 inch. Uh, yeah. There's a 15 inch coin. sub inside. It's uh, I I changed it. I put a, a, a the newer model. Okay. It's a it's a 2235. Okay. Uh, 15 inch sub. Yeah. It. Uh, I changed it because it's the same spec as the older one, okay. but it has a, a hundred watts more power than the original one. And I noticed you have some uh, tweeter mounted on top of yeah. the speaker. That's a rear firing tweeter I I, I, uh, I put. Mm -hmm. Just because I had an amplifier just driving uh, two tweeters, I said, hey, let me make that amplifier work a little more. <laughs> and I also like the results. It, it gave more uh, like air. It, may, it makes it sound even more live. Oh, uh, I like it a lot. I also have my own plugs. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have a dedicated circuits, uh, hopefully, like yeah. I did at your house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I built my own uh, extension cords, mm -hmm. power plugs. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm an electrician, so I like doing all this stuff. I see. I okay. like to have uh, the best electricity possible. <laughs> I don't have any uh, conditioners. I don't really believe in conditioners. Oh, interesting. No. Uh, I mean, some days, maybe in the day, the electricity is not as great as at nighttime. Okay. Maybe I, 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 I'm starting to believe that, uh, that then. my system does sound better at night. But anyways, uh. maybe it's just me. Okay, so Tony, what do you like about your system? Why did you build your system this way? Because I noticed, you know, looking at these big drivers, I, I thought I was going to be violated by your base, mm -hmm. but it's not. No. Everything is, as you mentioned, cohesive, balanced. Yeah. You know, this big, big driver, and yet it is balanced. Yeah, and they also, uh, we didn't mention that there, uh, there's a horn in there for the mids, eh? Right, right. And the, uh, it's a compression tweeter. Okay. Uh, it's the uh, 077 tweeter. Mm -hmm. So It's a compression tweeter. It's, uh, it's very different. Okay. I'm sure you can hear it, eh? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a bit special. So why did you choose the JBL? Uh, well... My mentor in uh, audio, mm -hmm. uh, my buddy Pat, he's, uh, he, got, he, has, he built himself a, a pair. He always wanted the L300, but he built himself the bigger model. I forgot the model. He built them in the two spec. Okay. Uh, it's a five-way speaker, although, mm -hmm. he, that he built. And uh, when I, was, I used to go to his house, that's how he got me into the hobby. Okay. Going to his house, I, I fell in love with the sound. I mean, I always wanted Macintoshes like he had. Mm -hmm. I had the other amplifiers before, and every time I would go to his place, I'd be like, oh, I got to get a Macintosh. And now I ended up with three Macintoshes, which uh, I know they, they, they are vintage, but they don't, I don't know, since I went active, it doesn't give it that as much of that uh, vintage sound. Um, like, I remember when I started off with one, mm -hmm. It didn't sound uh, as as good. It wasn't as uh, the clarity wasn't there like now. I don't find it slow. Usually, uh, no. Macintosh is slow, right? But I no, mean, it doesn't sound. It slow. is. It it still does have the uh, Macintosh sound. Yeah. I uh, see that roundness in the bass and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not as much as it's because it's active, so okay. it's like there's nothing in the way. It's amplifier to driver direct. Mm -hmm. It's really the amplifier controlling. There's nothing between the driver and the amplifier. There's no crossover. The only thing I have is uh, protection ca capacitors. Okay. In case uh, a bad luck happens, sometimes even in, by turning on and off the amplifiers, there's thumps to the driver. So they're just protectors, it's just protection. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm gonna wrap it up at this point. Uh, I guess the question I have for you, Tony, is, uh, what do you like about your system? Why why did you choose the system and what's great about it? All right. Well, uh, what I love about my sound system is that uh, it sounds more lively than other sound systems. It's a big system. There's mm -hmm. big speakers. You can feel the you can feel the bass. You could you, you you can hear the dynamics. It's very dynamic compared to other systems out there. Right. And when you put a lot of volume to them, yeah. it, it doesn't like it doesn't crap out. I right. mean, it, it, the clarity is still there. It doesn't distort as easy as other speakers. Mm -hmm. It sounds more lively, like the band's in front of you. Okay. Uh, I, I just don't get that with smaller speakers, small towers. Uh -huh. I, um, Even the modern ones. Like, I, I listen to a lot of system. It, it's nowhere in terms of raw output. Close that's to right. this one, right? And I'm a horn guy. Mm -hmm. the, the LE75. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I, I like 
compression drivers, horn drivers for mm -hmm. me are, I don't know, they're, they're special. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's dynamic, right? Yeah, and I, I understand sometimes people, they'll say, uh, oh, they're a shawty or, but what a vintage Macintosh amplifier, it uh, compensated that. You are 100% right. Yeah. It can be mm -hmm. harsh at times if you, but I tamed that down with wires. I, I, I worked at it. I mean, I yeah. did a lot of A, B tests, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of it. And now I'm really satisfied and I'm not changing my system for a good uh, while. Like I can't find anything wrong with it at the moment. All right. It's been maybe about a good year now. That you've been tweaking, upgrading, yeah, and changing, and now you're now there, yeah, nothing bothers me. Okay, okay. I only upgrade when something bothers me. I see. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah. You did it in one year, uh, I guess. At the end, as long as you enjoy the music, I think that's what's the most important, right? And you that's found, right. You found your sound. That's right. I found my sound. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Till next time. All right. Bye bye.